While most people go to the movies looking for a good story with some cool action, real fans know that there's more going on than meets the eye. When a blockbuster movie is successful, it usually means that the people who made it are even bigger geeks than the people watching it. That's why they sometimes stuff their movies to the gills with hidden details that most viewers won't even notice. I don't care. But for attentive fans, these details make all the difference. Here are Screen Rant's amazing hidden details in popular movies you probably missed. The Human Torch in Captain America The First Avenger. Before before we knew him as Captain America, Chris Evans played Johnny Storm, also known as the Human Torch, in 2005's Fantastic Four. But did you know that the Human Torch also makes a cameo appearance in Captain America The First Avenger? Don't believe us? Take a look at the 1943 World Expo scene. As the camera pans across the exhibition, it passes a man inside of a glass cylinder wearing a red suit. While this costumed figure isn't Johnny Storm, it does look an awful lot like the original Human Torch, an android created by Dr. Phineas T. Horton in the 1939 version of the comic book. Will this version of the character ever see some action in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Only time will tell. Red Apple Cigarettes in Kill Bill Volume 1 When the bride touches down in Tokyo to seek vengeance against Oren Ishii, director Quentin Tarantino included a little Easter egg for fans of his movie. The bride walks past a large advertisement for Red Apple Cigarettes, which is a fictional brand that's appeared in several Tarantino films, including Pulp Fiction, From Dust Till Dawn, and Four Rooms. Tarantino himself has claimed that all of his films take place in the same universe, and this is only one clue. You need another one? The plot to Kill Bill bears a striking resemblance to the plot of Fox Force 5, the TV pilot that Uma Thurman's character describes in Pulp Fiction. Perhaps the series got a title change before it finally aired? Smallville actors in Man of Steel. For some people, Superman is Tom Welling, who played a young Clark Kent on the CW Smallville for 10 seasons. Zack Snyder was evidently a fan of the series. Alessandro Giuliani, Chad Krochuk, Mackenzie Gray, Tom O'Pennicott, Ian Tracy, and David Paitko were all actors who appeared in Smallville and later played small roles in Snyder's Man of Steel. But the most obvious connection between the two iterations of Superman is Amy Adams. We all know she plays Lois Lane in the DC Extended universe, but before she was famous, she appeared in a first season episode of Smallville. Adams played an overweight high school student who accidentally drinks a kryptonite tainted veggie shake that makes her crave human fat. It wasn't exactly the most dignified role. The Millennium Falcon in Star Trek First Contact Some fans will tell you that you're either a fan of Star Trek or a fan of Star Wars, and never the twain shall meet. Except that's not true. In fact, the special effects in Star Trek First Contact were created by Industrial Light and Magic, a company founded by George Lucas to work on the Star Wars movies. One special effects guy, John Knoll, worked on both First Contact and the Star Wars Special Editions, so he decided to slip a little Easter egg into the Battle of the Federation versus the Borg Cube. If you look closely, you can see Han Solo's Millennium Falcon flying in the background of the battle. It's pretty small, so you'll have to zoom in, but it's proof that Star Wars and Star Trek can coexist, even in the same movie. R2-D2 and C-3PO in Raiders of the Lost Ark You wouldn't believe it, but R2-D2 makes a cameo in Steven Spielberg's Raiders of the Lost Ark, this time with his erudite companion C-3PO. When Indiana Jones descends into the Well of the Souls to collect the Ark of the Covenant, you can see hieroglyphics of the two droids on one of the pillars. The connection here is that Star Wars creator George Lucas produced Raiders of the Lost Ark, and of course, Harrison Ford stars in both franchises. In another Indiana Jones Star Wars Easter egg, you can see Indy escape from Shanghai's Club Obi-Wan at the beginning of Temple of Doom. I wonder who that's a reference to. Hidden references in The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring wasn't the first adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien's epic novels. In 1978, Ralph Bakshi made an animated version of the epic story. The movie may have flopped when it came out, but it developed a cult following over the decades, and even inspired some shots in the better known Peter Jackson films. When the hobbit Odo Proudfoot puts his feet up at the beginning of The Fellowship of the Ring, the shot is an homage to a similar image that appears in Bakshi's film. Similarly, when Frodo Baggins and his friends hide underneath a tree root as hooded wraiths pass by above them, the shot is clearly inspired by Bakshi's film as well. Baby Harleys and Jokers in Suicide Squad One of the more striking images in David Ayer's Suicide Squad is the shot of the Joker lying on the floor surrounded by all of his weapons. Apparently, the shot was inspired by the opening scene of the Pink Floyd musical The Wall, and the film's marketing really relied on it. But when the camera spins up from the Clown Prince of Crime, you can also see little onesies and twosies laid out on the floor. What could these be? Given that Harley Quinn's dream life in the film involved children, Perhaps this is a clue to the future of the Joker family. Maybe this family of crime really is planning to settle down. 
the satellite dish in Star Wars The Force Awakens. Fans already know that Star Wars The Force Awakens is jam-packed with Easter eggs, like big name cameos and little hints and references to the previous Star Wars films. Director J.J. Abrams is obviously a huge fan of the franchise, and he really made sure to leave his mark on The Force Awakens. When Rey and Finn fly the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy off the planet Jakku, you can notice a small design change on the ship. The satellite dish, which was large and round in the original trilogy, has been replaced with a smaller rectangular dish. Why is this? Well, when Lando Calrissian makes a run at the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi, the old dish gets shorn off by a collision. J.J. Abrams was just paying attention to Star Wars canon. Community cameo in Captain America Civil War As with any movie from the Marvel Cinematic Universe these days, Captain America Civil War is loaded with tiny details for the fans, from references to the comics to inside jokes among the actors. But one detail has carried through from the last film in the Captain America franchise, the inclusion of a cameo from an alum of the NBC sitcom Community. In The Winter Soldier, Danny Putty, better known as Abed, appeared as a technician for S.H.I.E.L.D. DC Pearson, who plays a student journalist in the sitcom, also appeared as an Apple Store technician. In Civil War, the Dean himself, Jim Rash, appears as an MIT professor begging Tony Stark for research money, basically playing the same character. The Russo brothers, who directed the last two Captain America films, also directed several episodes of the fan-favorite sitcom, so it makes sense that they would want to bring back some of their old friends. So what do you think of our list? Did we miss any other mind-blowing hidden details? Join the discussion in the comments below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching.